Hello, everybody. Welcome back, Dang Teach at CCSD. Today's lesson is going to be routes and formulation, a two parter. So, this is part one of two. So, for today's lesson, we're going to go over the difference between enteral and parenteral routes. And we'll cover most of the enteral routes uh, and their formulations. We'll save the rest for part two. All right. So routes of routes of administration, ROAs, and dosage forms. So we can pick the route of route of administration and the dosage form to determine the absorption. So you can think about which route is faster, IV or PO. Or you can think of which dosage form is quicker a tablet or a solution so the dosage form is how the drug physically comes route of administration is how it enters into the body so they'll classify it as enteral or parental so enter means intestines peri means eh, next to the intestines so just remember the enteral routes and then everything else will be parental routes. So the four enteral routes you'll need to recall are oral, PO, sublingually under the tongue, SL, buccal between the cheek and gums, and rectally. So that's it. Just those four are absorbed through the GI tract. Everything else is going to be outside. So para means next to. So into the eyes, the nose, the lungs, into a vein, muscle, the skin, under the skin, or vaginally, those all will require, or those are all parental routes. All right, in this image, uh, the enteral routes are outlined in red for you. And remember, just remember those four, B-U-C, S-L, P-O, and P-R between the cheek and gums, under the tongue, by mouth, and rectally, into the rectum. All right, enteral or parental. So remember, you only have to remember those four. So intradermal, those are parental. Buccal, is it one of the four? Yes, it is. How about rectal? Is it one of the four? Is it part of the GI tract? Yes, it is. Vaginally, is that part of the GI tract? Nope. So it's going to be parental. Orally, by mouth. Yep, it's going to absorb in the stomach, the GI tract. So that's enteral. Intranasal, nope. Not part of the GI tract. Inhalation, lungs, nope. Parental. Sublingual, yes, that is going to be part of the GI tract. And into the eyes, no. Parental. So just remember the four, buccal, rectal, oral, and under the tongue. Onset time. So how fast it takes for the drug to start working. We can manipulate that by changing the routes and formulation. How long, duration of action, how long the drug works and how much of it enters into the body. We can change those based on the route we choose and the dosage form. Local effect. So the drug will only work at the site. And then we have systemic. So systemic means it's going to go throughout the whole system. Usually it's going to enter the bloodstream and wherever the blood goes the drug is going to be carried there as well. All right, let's now go into the routes. We'll cover uh, PO first, and then we'll cover all of the dosage forms for the PO route. So as you guys recall, the pH in the GI system, very acidic in the stomach, so that's about one or two. And then as it goes into the small intestines, it starts to get neutralized. So still a little bit acid, acidic. And then once it reaches the large intestines, 
it crosses over to become alkaline or base. So if you have drugs in your stomach at that low pH, they may be broken down. Or if food is in the way, it may reduce absorption of the drug. Solid dosage forms. So we're still in the PO route. So PO, the verb, is going to be take. It's always going to be take, independent of the dosage form, because it's intended to be swallowed. So the key term for tablets is going to be compression. And there's more than just the active ingredient in a tablet. You might have binders, lubricants, things to help it dissolve, or to make it of manageable size. Not all tablets are the same. They might be chewable. They might be different types of release mechanisms. So for example, we have SR, sustain release, which is different from SA, sustained action. So if you're dispensing a tablet or a capsule, make sure it also has the correct release mechanism. As for scored and unscored tablets, most likely you can split a scored tablet for an unscored tablet, it's going to depend on the drug. So refer that question to your pharmacist. Next dosage form for the oral route are capsules. The key term for capsule is a gelatin shell. So gelatin is a type of protein that dissolves in water. So we do have these gel caps, but inside the gel caps is not water, it's oil. And since gelatin dissolves in water, it won't dissolve in oil. To make a small capsule more manageable, they might put it inside a larger shell, or the same with a tablet, to make it more manageable for those with lost dexterity. Most of the time, It'll be powder or granules. Now, for these extended release granules, you can empty the capsules. However, you can't crush the individual granules. Next, for oral formulations, we have bulk powders. So things like uh, Metamucil fiber or electrolyte replacement, you'll mix with juice or water before administering. What is the pH of the following parts of the GI tract? So in the stomach, it's acidic. So if you guys recall, the pH scale ranges from 0 to 14. Low pH is acid, and high pH is base. And then in the middle, 7 is neutral. So the stomach is quite acidic, ranging 1 to 2. Small intestines, getting closer to neutral. And then the large intestines enters the basic range. What are capsules comprised of? So the key term for capsules is gelatin, a gelatin shell. What does ECASA stand for? You may recall aspirin, acetosalicylic acid, but what type of dosage form is EC? So we had ER, DR, IR, but EC stands for Enterocoded. So enter is for the intestines. Since aspirin is an acid, you don't want to further upset the stomach. So you want the drug to release in the intestines.
All right, now we're moving away from the solid dosage form into the liquid dosage form. So solution is just clear, just a clear liquid. If it's water, then it's aqueous. But not all drugs can be dissolved in water. So if it's not in water, it will be non-aqueous. So oily stuff will then likely dissolve in glycerin, alcohol, or propylene glycol. The key term for syrups is high in sugar. And it may contain a little bit of alcohol. Now the high sugar content is designed to thicken the dosage form. Elixirs are similar to syrups, but they're going to have a little bit less sugar, but a lot more alcohol. So the key term there is hydroalcoholic. Next we have spirits and essence. So spirits are another term for distilled, alco distilled alcohol. So the evaporation of the mash is what they collected as alcohol. So fairly high. So the key term here is volatile. So that means it's going to evaporate. So if you put a scent in it, like peppermint, you'll be able to smell it. The opposite of an essence or a spirit would be a tincture. So it's going to be non-volatile substance. So they're not going to evaporate into the air. Suspensions are semi-solid dosage form. So it is not completely dissolved. So the manufacturer will have it as a powder and a lot of times we'll need to reconstitute it before dispensing. So what you want to do is measure out your diluent and you only want to add half. That way there's room to shake. You'll add the remaining half of diluent and then affix the expiration date. Now that you reconstitute it, it'll have a limited expiration date. Emulsions. Emulsion is a mixture of oil and water. Normally these two things don't mix, but if you add something that is part water, part oil, it will make it mix a lot better. So for example is your salad dressing. You got your olive oil and your vinegar. They'll separate, so you'll need to add something that is part fat, part water. So you can add some egg yolk to help emulsify your salad dressing. Gels. So just like gelatin, right, it's usually uh, protein based. So the structure has a lot of different branches. So when you have another one next to it and they try to pass each other, they kind of get tangled up. So that's what they mean by that interlacing 3D network. So that resists flow. So the term for resistance to flow is viscosity. How should one reconstitute powders for suspension? Well, the first thing you should do is read the label. It will most likely contain the directions. First, measure the diluent quantity, then you're going to add in only half. Shake well, add the remaining amount, shake again just to make sure, and then very importantly, since you reconstituted, you'll need to apply the correct expiration date. All right, moving away from PO. So things taken PO intended to be swallowed and absorbed in the stomach, intestines, 
However, dosage under the tongue and between the cheek and gums are not going to be absorbed in the intestines. They're actually going to bypass the liver by being absorbed directly into the bloodstream through the mouth. So the skin in the mouth is very thin and drug can directly enter into the blood supply. So this is similar to those who chew tobacco. They place the tobacco in between their cheek and gums and the nicotine is absorbed directly into their bloodstream. Sublingual. So under the tongue for the patient, we want to use as simple English as possible. Example, nitroglycerin tablets. You want quick action if you're having a heart attack. Buccal, place between the cheek and gums. You have tablets or lozenges or nicotine gum. You'll chew the nicotine gum and then you'll place it between the cheek and gums for the nicotine to absorb. Directions for the patient, have them clean their mouth, a little bit of water. If they eat eaten, drink in, or smoke, or have any hot or cold beverages, just allow their mouth to return to normal temperature before administering the dose. So have them take a sip of water, place the tablet either under the tongue or between the cheek and gums. Have them close the mouth until the tablet is dissolved. Now the last enteral route, rectally. So if PO, under the tongue, buccally, or any other route is not available, then they'll use the rectal route. So locally, it can promote lactation. So that's defecation, bowel movements. It also can be absorbed systemically. So the rectum has a large uh, blood supply. So drugs will absorb effectively, very efficiently through uh, the rectum. However, it may not be very predictable based on motility, the speed of the intestinal tract, and or the amount of moisture or mucus produced. So some common dosage form. Suppositories, unwrap and insert. Creams will apply, ointments will apply, enemas will administer the contents of one container. Suppositories, they're bullet shape. They could be wrapped or unwrapped. And enemas are gonna be irrigation solutions for the rectum. All right, some definitions. Define, give me the term for between the cheek and gums. Give me the dosage form that is alcoholic or hydroalcoholic made of a non-volatile substance. Key term is non-volatile. If you said tincture, you'd be correct. Any route other than enteral, so besides or next to the intestines would be para. So the prefix para means next to, parental. High concentration of sucrose. Which dosage form is that? If you said sucrose, very good. Clear, sweetened, hydroalcoholic. That's the key term. That would be the elixir. And lastly, not completely dissolved or a semi-solid dosage form. That would be suspensions. So make sure you affix the shake well sticker on all your suspensions. All right, that ends part one. Stay tuned for part two. And once again, thanks for joining us. I'm almost finished loading up all the chapters, just a few more, and we'll be done with phase one. Again, phase two, if you're not sure, I'm gonna do all the assignments step-by-step uh, step with you guys for the math, C codes, and probably even the papers and discussion. So watch out for those. Once again, thank you. And if it's your first time, welcome. Hope you come back for more.